हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम मनाली रेशमवाला असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम एलजे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फिजियोथेरापी टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एक्सेस इन प्लेन्स एक्सेस इन प्लेन्स आर पार्ट ऑफ सिलेबस ऑफ एक्सरसाइज थेरेपी वन फॉर फर्स्ट ईयर फिजियोथेरापी स्टूडेंट ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी बिफोर वी अंडरस्टैंड दीज फर्स्ट वी नीड टू नो सम ऑफ द बेजिक टर्मिनोलॉजीज to make this thing easier to understand the basic terminologies are one is interior the thing which is in front of your body or front of you are known as interior the thing which goes back of your body that is known as posterior the thing th- thing which is in front is interior and thing which is at back is posterior now if this thing is staying near to the midline of your body or towards the center of your body then is known as medial the medial is things which are towards the center of the body and if they are away from the center of your body then is known as lateral the thing which is away is lateral nearer or towards the midline is known as medial if the thing goes above you then is known as superior the thing which is above you is known as superior and if the thing goes below you is known as inferior superior and inferior next is distal which looks like lateral but the distal here i want to say is a part of your body on the if the part of your body is away from midline or far from midline is known as distal and the part of the body which is near to the midline of body is known as proximal distal and proximal next terminology is deep which is inside innermost part is deep and the outermost part or the outer part then the inner is known as superficial next is the definition of axis and plane axis what is an axis an axis is a line about which movement occurs and a plane is a surface which lies right angle to an axis in which movement occurs this axis and planes are described when the body is in anatomical position so here there are the types of axis and plane one is sagittal axis perpendicular to it is frontal plane second is frontal axis perpendicular to it is sagittal plane and a vertical axis which is in which to perpendicular to it is horizontal plane sagittal axis is known as sagittal because it is parallel to the sagittal suture of the skull it pass anterior to the posterior which is parallel to the suture of the skull and the movement occurs in around these axes takes place in frontal plane and here we can see that frontal plane divides the body into anterior half and posterior half next is frontal axis and sagittal plane frontal axis passes along with the transverse suture of the skull that is in mediolateral direction and the plane in which movement occurs is sagittal plane the sagittal axis and frontal axis lies a right angle to each other sagittal axis passes from anterior to posterior and uh, frontal axis passes from medial to lateral they are at right angle to each other last is vertical axis it is parallel to the line of gravity so it passes superior to inferior in the body and the movement takes place in the plane is horizontal plane 
which is right angle to the vertical axis and this horizontal plane divides body into upper half and lower half let's see the examples of each axis sagittal axis passes interior to posterior and in most of the joints we can see adduction abduction variety of joint movement taking place around the sagittal axis in frontal plane except that of thumb as a thumb in a human body lies at a different plane than of fingers the axis and plane are described somewhat different for thumb which can be discussed later so here we can see that uh, adduction abduction movement can be occurring at shoulder joint at hip joint radial ulnar deviation at the wrist joint side flexion of cervical and lumbar spine are example of movement occurring around sagittal axis in frontal plane next examples for frontal axis are of flexion extension variety in almost all the joints like shoulder elbow wrist hip knee in ankle dorsiflexion and plantar flexion while flexion extension in cervical and lumbar spine except of thumb again here uh, on other joints flexion extension movement occurs around frontal axis and in sagittal plane the examples for vertical axis are of rotation motion all the rotatory movement occurs in around vertical axis in horizontal plane like shoulder internal external rotation hip internal external rotation supination and pronation at radial ulnar joint cervical and lumbar rotation and horizontal adduction abduction at hip and shoulder joint are example which are occurring around vertical axis in horizontal plane last thing we need to know are the plane of movement and gravity as we know the gravity is affecting each and every body part in a direction downward below but normal functional movements are very complex and cannot be described in a that it occurring in single axis or plane there can be more than one axis and more than one plane in which our functional movements are occurring to understand them we have divided the plane and movement here way, the way in shown movement in horizontal plane movement in inclined plane and movement in vertical plane we'll have to see the effect of gravity in all these three plane so first is movement in horizontal plane in horizontal plane there is no effect of gravity on the body part so it is also known as gravity free plane that means the movement which is occurring at joint and the muscles which are responsible for it does not have to work against the force of gravity so for them it is a gravity free plane so those muscles which are weak then we can allow them or encourage those movement to happen in horizontal plane so that the body part has to move against only a resistance of friction other than gravity is no more longer works in this plane the way we make the patient to do exercises in horizontal plane and the way their their strength regains we can change the patient to do exercise in inclined plane inclination can be either upwards or towards the downward side if a muscle is working in up inclination plane the resistance of gravity is modified due to the reaction of the plane and this reaction if it is towards the horizontal if that reaction of inclination is towards the horizontal then less effort is required as there will be more modification of gravity force and the way inclination move towards the vertical more resistance we can feel of that of gravitational force and more muscle work is required 
द सेम थिंग हैपन्स इन डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट दो डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट इज यूजली परफॉर्म्ड बाई ग्रेविटी ओनली नो नीड ऑफ मसल द डाउनवर्ड मूवमेंट विल बी अकरिंग विद द हेल्प ऑफ फोर्स ऑफ ग्रेविटी हियर अगेन द सेम प्लेन ऑफ रिएक्शन वेरिएशन विल वर्क लास्ट इज मूवमेंट इन वर्टिकल प्लेन as we can see in vertical plane the upward movement is purely done by muscular contraction in which muscles have to work against the force of gravity then only they can move the part upward while the downward movement is produced by gravity but if we want that movement to happen in very controlled speed or specific speed we need to get that control through muscular action for example here is shown a short hip abduction here in hip abduction the upward movement is done purely by muscular action against gravity and that if downward movement person wants to lower the leg at very slow speed muscular action is required here are the references thank you